I wanted to start with a press release based on a peer-reviewed article. The press release comes from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and it is titled, Scripps Institution of Oceanography Researchers Discover Heat Bombs Destroying Arctic Ice. Researchers recently had a breakthrough in finding the specific mechanism behind the rapid melting of sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. That's the subhead. This came out on Friday, April 23rd, so just a couple of days ago. And here's the really critical feature within this press relief, press release, sorry. Jennifer McKinnon, a physical oceanographer at Scripps, chief scientist of the expedition and lead author of the paper, says Arctic sea ice could be gone by next year and only develop during the winter months. This is a critically important feature because when the Arctic sea ice disappears for the first time in, this, in the history of Homo sapiens, that will trigger a global average temperature rise almost certainly enough to extinguish all life on Earth within a relatively short period of time. Obviously, not the day that we have an ice-free Arctic. But I suspect that if the Arctic ice is all gone next year, 2022, for the first time, then 2023 will, starting in the spring and summer months, we will begin to lose habitat around the world for our species. As a consequence, nuclear power plants will melt down. The extremely rapid rate of environmental change will cause loss of habitat for all life on Earth, including Homo sapiens. The peer-reviewed paper that came out coincident with the press release on Friday, August, April 23rd, 2021, appeared in Nature Communications and is titled A Warm Jet in a Cold Ocean. Senior author is Jennifer A. McKinnon, M-A-C-K, McKinnon. And she is joined by 28 other authors in publishing this peer-reviewed article, A Warm Jet in a Cold Ocean. And it describes the mechanism by which the Arctic Ocean is heating and will continue to heat in the near future, at least one of the mechanisms. Now I want to go back a little bit to January 15th, 2018. First, I want to reiterate with that quote from senior author Jennifer McKinnon in the press release, Arctic ice could be gone by next year and only develop during the winter months. So she's suggesting that the Arctic ice could be gone as early as next year, that's 2022, and then in, if that happens in 2023, we will have profound, rapid changes in the environment that will almost certainly cause loss of habitat for our species. And as a result of the very abrupt warming, likely for all species on Earth. Then let's go back to January 15th, 2018, two years and about four months ago from Forbes. The title is, We Have Five Years to Save Ourselves from Climate Change, Harvard Scientist says. The Harvard Scientist is James Anderson, a Harvard University professor of atmospheric chemistry best known for establishing that chlorofluorocarbons were damaging the ozone layer. So quite a renowned professor. And he is quoted in this paper in Forbes as saying, quote, the chance that there will be any permanent ice left in the Arctic after 2022 is essentially zero. End quote. With 75 to 80 percent of permanent ice having melted already in the last 35 years. And so it seems that we have consensus, at least the consensus of these two scientists, and in the case of McKinnon, 28 other co-authors and peer reviewers and editors, there seems to be a consensus that we will lose Arctic ice for the first time next year, 2022. The following year will be 
comprised of rapid loss of habitat throughout the entire world based on the science that I read. Consider, for example, the peer-reviewed article by Strona and Bradshaw in Scientific Reports, November 2018, quote, in a simplified view, the idea of co-extinctions reduces to the obvious conclusion that a consumer cannot survive without its resources. That's the take-home message from this 2018 paper by Strawn and Bradshaw. The conclusion of my own paper, The Role of Conservation Biology in Understanding the Importance of Arctic Sea Ice, published in Earth and Environmental Science Research and Re Reviews on July 25, 2020, the conclusion reads like this. The evidence presented in this paper indicates the strong likelihood of extinction of all life on Earth in the near future. This conclusion, based on the ongoing rapid rate of environmental change, invokes obvious questions, some of which I have mentioned in my earlier writing. How do we minimize suffering? Is such a quest restricted to humans, or are other organisms involved? What is the temporal frame of the quest? Does it extend beyond the moment, perhaps to months or years? Does it extend beyond the personal to include other individuals? What intellectual and emotional responses are expected in light of this knowledge? Which of these responses are acceptable? How shall I respond? How shall we respond as individuals within communities and societies? These are the questions to which I have chosen to fo on which I have chosen to focus. I encourage others to join me in my quest to understand and alleviate suffering. I can imagine worse pursuits than the final individuals of our species exhibiting ethical, responsible behavior. So, there's a few papers, an overview of where we are and where we're headed in the not too distant future with respect to people, wealthy, financially wealthy people living in bunkers and therefore persisting for an extended period of time. That seems very unlikely to me. If we lose habitat for all members of our species in 2023, as I expect based on these sources I've just provided, then I don't believe there will be a single human being left in 2026, as I've mentioned several times. What about those people in bunkers? What about them? Do you really think people are going to be willing to survive in that sort of environment for an extended period of time? It would surprise me very much if people in bunkers didn't kill themselves or kill each other within a span of a year or two. So I don't really see that as a viable option. In addition, so what? So they come out of their bunker in six months or six years to find a, an earth depleted of life. You know, I'm not the only person who knows this information. I suspect there are a lot of people who are reasonably well informed who know this information as well. And those are not the people who are going, going to be going into bunkers and trying to, quote, survive for something resembling an extended period of time. Thank you for putting up with my ongoing ramble. And I'm going to go turn to the chat now and see what I missed. Mm -hmm.